Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Orgelina, I'm a vocal coach and I teach online and in Auckland, New Zealand. So today I want to talk about a super important topic in singing, maybe the most important topic of all, which is the interpretation of your piece. So every time you learn a song, ideally you go through three stages. The first one is learning the music. So that is your lyrics, your melodies, your um, rhythm. Okay. The second stage is learning the vocal technique for your song. That is resolving any issue that uh, is not allowing you to sing the song with ease, such as high notes, runs, belting, that kind of things. Once you resolve those first two steps. Then we have the third step, which is the most important one of all, and is the interpretation of your piece. That is the, the way you deliver the song. Now, of course, as you know, when you enjoy a singer that you like, you are never thinking, oh, I don't like the vocal technique they have. Well, I hope you don't. Even me, that's my job. <laughs> basically is um, my main thing is to coach people in vocal technique but we work on vocal technique not for the vocal technique's sake but we work on it so that allows you to interpret the songs better it needs to be in this order if you don't get your vocal technique right you are going to be singing and worrying about whether you reach those high notes or not instead of delivering the message, which is what really matters. When you go enjoy a singer, you go to be moved and to feel emotions and things like that. You don't go to hear perfectly coordinated vocal system, hopefully not. So that's what I want to talk about today. Most people, when they perform, they um, find that it is awkward to sing in front of an audience and I'm of course talking about beginner singers here and uh, maybe you are a singing student and you are thinking about maybe going to an open mic or to sing with a band for the first time something like that and then you find that you go and you are like sort of singing petrified and so what I'm gonna give you today is a few tips that ma can make your interpretation a little bit more credible and a little bit better. First thing I want to say is that if you suffer from stage fright and you let's say that you do want to sing in public but you just are, are terrified of doing it such as what I was when I was like 15, 16. Don't worry about interpret the song with singing from your heart and like delivering every single word. At the beginning my recommendation is just sing as many times as you can to just get over that fear and you're gonna be fine. But once you are over that fear you are not petrified anymore, you are not suffering and in that fly or flight mode that we are going to talk about in other videos of course, then you can start thinking about making your interpretation a little bit better for the audience. This part of singing is super important and super amazing because this is the moment in your singing in which you are given something. You have practice, you have trained yourself as a singer and when you're on, on stage delivering a beautiful song, a beautiful story, that is not for you, this is something you are giving. That is the point <laughs> that I call it the get over yourself moment. It's a very important moment in the maturity of a singer because for a long time when you start your singing journey like most people go on stage and all they are thinking about is themselves the whole time. You are worrying about how people see you, about if people like your voice and it's about if you're gonna reach that high note, it's all about you. And there is a moment in which you start thinking about just giving something in which everything changes and you understand internally what singing and music is about and that is magic. So let's go to the techniques. The first technique I want to teach you today is very simple yet effective. It was kind of fun for me as an Argentinian also to start using it because Argentinians, we speak with the hands a lot. <laughs> I'm exaggerating it now, but usually we speak and we use their, the hands all the time. Normal everyone does it at some extent. And yes, it's something that is actually studied and it has to be with your brain sort of using the hands to, to complete the meaning of what you're saying. Of course, you're not even aware that you're moving your hands. Um, but when we sing songs, usually we don't move anything. Right? If I tell you a story of something that happened to me and it's something very emotional and I tell it to you like this and I don't move my hands in the, the whole time, you're not going to believe me. It's going to be subconscious. You're going to be a little bit of, ah, uh, mm, Mm, there is some, a little bit of noise there. You know, when you sing, it's the same thing. If you th sing a song, an emotional song, like most songs, 
and you don't, <laughs> you don't move. It's kind of, it's not credible for the brain. And again, this is all subconscious. So uh, an exercise that you can do with a friend that you have or a family member, just tell them something exciting that happened that day or something emotional. It doesn't have to be exciting. Don't direct your hands <laughs> purposely, but just observe how the hands naturally move when you talk. Just observe, pay attention to it, because you already do it. You should be aware of that. Once you go familiar with this, then you can grab the lyrics of your song and you can say them. You say the lyrics of your song as if you were telling a story. Take your time to do it. First, of course, you have to connect with the words that you are saying. You have to be present in the words. And you're going to see that automatically you start moving the hands a little bit. It doesn't have to be a huge movement, but there is going to be some energy moving. And then once you got the hang of it, then you can try singing the song and allowing the hands to complete your message as well. And that is going to be great. Now I have a second technique that you can use right away. And it's a technique I learned in acting, actually, an acting class. And basically you grab the lines of a song and we're taking the lyrics away. And by the way, in order to be able to, to interpret the song, make sure you have absolutely memorized your lyrics. That's before any interpretation work. So you say you memorize your lyrics. Let's say that you are learning the song uh, Yesterday by the Beatles. And what you do, you grab the first line, for example. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. And what you're going to do is you're going to play around for a while this line and you're going to stress a different word every single time. So I'm going to do it in order. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. 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 See? So every time I say it, I I feel a different meaning, a different energy every single time I say them. Let's continue. The third technique, being present in the music and melody. What do I mean by this? As a vocalist, there is so much meaning already composed in the music and in the lyrics that is called a prosody in music, when all the elements of the music come together to support the meaning. So the melody already gives you an energy. And that is why, for example, in film music that usually doesn't have lyrics, you can already feel the emotions that they want you to feel because the, the melodies and the harmonies and the sounds are built in a way that make you feel something. So you have that when you sing songs, you have beautiful melodies and you also have lyrics. Now, lyrics by themselves, they already have energy. Words have energy. You as a singer, you are a channel for that, for that meaning. So if you can do the exercise of instead of just thinking really hard of what comes next and the high note and all that kind of things that we do when we just start, if you just give yourself to the music, to the melody, your present, feeling the music, allowing the music to go through your body, and if you are deeply present in every word, not anticipating the words, but present in the words, you're going to see that just that gives you so much energy, so much interpretation energy. And the amazing news is that no one has the same way of interpreting a song. So if you use any of these techniques, every time you sing a song, it's going to be so different from anyone else. And People is going to enjoy more your songs, but more importantly, you are going to enjoy more the magic of being a singer. If you are finding this content interesting, go ahead and subscribe to my channel because I am constantly posting useful content on how to be an integral singer with all the skills a vocalist needs to not only be a nice singer, but also a musician, an artist. So the last thing I wanted to talk about today is a little bit of a bonus about how to get over the nerves of <laughs> singing in public. I was not, not shy when I was a child and a teenager. I was pathologically shy. It was really bad. And I got over that through singing. So it is possible. How do you get over the nerves? When you are just starting singing, it can be really, really hard to get over those initial nerves that sometimes are petrifying and you know, you start singing lessons and deep inside you do want to sing in public. But then when you go there, you're like, what if I don't? So how to get over that if you want to get over that and start enjoying your life as a 
musician. Um, there are many ways to do it. As I said, I'm going to talk more about that in other videos and in my singing community if you want to join. By the way, if you are finding these tips interesting, I am going to open a singing community soon that is going to contain a lot of lessons that go much more in depth. So if you are interested in that, please join my email newsletter and you'll be the first to know. There are many ways to get over those initial nerves. And as I said earlier on, one of the ways is to do it as often as you can. It's always about like, choosing like the one thing that you can try. Like for me, there are two things that you can try that are always gonna make it much, much easier. The first one is being uh, present in your body. How do you do that? Well, feeling your body. Most of us don't even, don't ever feel their bodies. Also, we're also gonna talk about that in another, another time. But if you are just standing and you're gonna sing and you just take a moment to feel the sole of your feet, something that we, almost never do and you're gonna feel immediately more grounded you're gonna feel more present because a lot of the times when we are anxious about performing is because we are actually in the future what is going people gonna say things like that if you are in the present in the present everything is good we all know that nowadays that the the lesser brain has a, a big role in us being petrified and that those fears are not actually rational so being grounded, it, it works at that level and it makes everything a little bit more easy because if you are grounded, feeling the soles of the feet centered in your body way, not bringing your heels back or anything like that, and you allow your body to sort of discharge energy through the sole of the feet, then your brain is going to assume that you are safe, that you are not like chased by a lion. The second thing that will help you immediately is your breathing. Breathing is a super important connector between your body and the mind. What helps you communicate those very two important parts of yourself. Usually when we are in panic mode, the breathing becomes super short. And that's when you start telling your brain, we are in danger. So if you breathe in like this, like people do when they are petrified <laughs> and about to sing, it's not going to go that well. The good news is you are uh, in charge of your breathing. So before you go on stage, you can do exercises that will allow you to have a calmer breathing. If you take a moment to, for example, breathe in, opening your arms at the same time, about three seconds to inhale, three seconds to exhale. If you are panicking, those three seconds, it might not seem like a lot now, but they are going to make you feel much more calmer. And also the action of bringing your arms to the side also makes you feel calmer. Everything is subconscious. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. There is so much more to come very soon. See you next video.